Hey, so I have this little monster here. This is another thing that you can get on uh, Alibaba, um, probably on eBay as well. I'll include some links. Um, but this is basically a battery capacity checker and monitor, right? It should monitor the voltage, it should monitor the current, it should tell us how much current is flowing in and out um, of the battery. Um, but what's cool is it uses a hall, a hall monitor. So um, it can monitor the flow going out of the battery without actually uh, getting in the middle of it. This the the wire, the negative wire is just going to go through that hole. We don't have to deal with uh, actually connect, getting directly between the connection between the battery and the load. Uh, it's also got a couple other things that are useful. Um, I don't know how easy it is to see, um, but this takes external power, and it also uh, can power relay. Um, and like presumably that relay is going to come from the external power that's powering this. So you can use that relay to presumably uh, control uh, power to the battery uh, on and off. So you can get in the way of the power, uh, which is pretty useful as a, as a tool. So uh, let's rig this up and see how well it works. Hey, so this thing's pretty cool. Uh, I set it up. Let me go through the setup real quick. Okay. So uh, this is basically just a screen. Um, everything is run through the uh, hall sensor. Um, these are the batteries. Uh, this is the battery. This is going to battery negative, and this is going to battery positive. Uh, I've hooked up a relay here. This is a 24 volt relay. Um, so this relay uh, controls the power that's going to go in the battery. This is coming from the battery. Battery. Uh, sorry, this is coming from the inverter, and this is going to battery negative. So this goes through here and when this uh, relay or contactor is turned on, power flows from the battery to the inverter and it's turned on through these two wires which are controlled um, by the relay. Okay, so this is de a default um, open uh, contactor and when you run power through it, it closes and closes the circuit. The other th two things is that I've just got uh, external power and I'm running uh, 24 volt external power to it right now and as you can see, it doesn't use very much. Um, so yeah, so that's a really simple setup, right? We, we just have to connect to the battery, we have to give it some power, and then if we want to use a relay, you don't have to use a relay. Uh, but if you want to use a relay, you can get up here. The advantage of a relay is you can set all, sort of set all sorts of settings on here, and they can stop the flow of power um, to, to your inverter. So there's my inverter, it's a 12 volt inverter. And yeah, so right now, the nothing's running through here, but the moment I turn it on, you can hear the contactor go, and now power's flowing through there. Right, so I can turn it on and off. And there's all sorts of settings. So OVP stands for over voltage protection. So if the voltage um, goes too high on your battery, so let's say you're charging your battery, um, and this relay is hooked up to what's ever charging your battery, um, if the voltage gets too high, this can will automatically disconnect it. Uh, OPP is over power protection. So I guess uh, if too much power is being pulled. Um, over current protection is OCP. Um, which is the third one down. And uh, what else do we have? We have OFT, which is over time protection. So I guess if things are going too long. And uh, OAH is over charge protection. So if, you, if it takes too many amps, you can stop it. And the one that I'm most interested in, low LOP, uh, low voltage protection. So let's see, uh, let's just check if low voltage protection works. Uh, all I'm gonna do is go down here you can set all you have to do to turn the low voltage protection on and off is just push OK. Now low, low voltage protection is on. Now it's off. Same thing for all of these. All you got to do is push the green. But what you want to do is you want to hold OK and then you can change the setting. So I've set it for 13 volts. Right? Um, my battery is at just above 13 volts right now. You can change it to the 0.1 volt. So like that. So my battery is at 13 volts right now. Right? So. Basically, if I turn this on and then I run any sort of power through the inverter, the voltage might dip and that will probably, if this is working, it should cut off the power to the inverter. So let's try that. So now the inverter is turned on, you can hear it, and let's turn the inverter on. Now the inverter is on and you can see we're at 13, uh, 13 volts, just above 13 volts and we're pulling a little less than an amp, which I know is accurate. And let's go for it. I'm going to turn on the power. We're going to dip below 13 volts. And if things go well, the low voltage protection should kick in and uh, the inverter should get cut off and the contactor should get turned off. There you go. Immediate, right? We, we dip below 13 volts. It immediately cut off power. Now nothing's flowing. The inverter's been turned off. So pretty cool. Let's do it one more time for the kids. Turning on that. Um, oh, I guess... Hold on one second, uh, one of my, my battery connector got disconnected, hold on. Okay, we're back in business, 13 purple volts. Um, let's 
run the power to it. Oh, power is going, flowing now. Uh, inverter's on. Turn this on. Oh, but no low voltage protection, right? So without low voltage protection, it's working great. Voltage is dipping a little bit, as to be expected. Uh, amperage measurements are super accurate, so I've measured this uh, myself. It's always around 23 amps, so I'd say this is a pretty accurate uh, measurement of amps and voltage, which is great. And if we go down, let's turn on low voltage protection. Just go down, hit enter. Now low voltage protection is on. Let's try it again. Immediately cuts it out, right? We're getting the before the low, below the low voltage cutoff and we're done, right? So pretty awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, that worked really well. The last uh, little trick here is that um, if you want to reset your settings, um, so let me run this for a second and none of my protections are on. So we'll just run this to get a little history going. Oh, that's, let me turn it on. Now it's on. Running, great, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and we'll turn that off. Now let's say we wanna reset the um, settings, right? You can see that we've recorded the amp hours and the wattage and all that kind of stuff. Just go down to the bottom, LOP, go down one more, press enter, everything resets. Okay, and now turning it off. Okay, um, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, you might wanna fiddle with your settings in terms of how you wanna get uh, the battery uh, working. It starts automatically at 100%. Um, that could be quite useful if your battery is already fully charged, but let's say you're starting this up at 50%, uh, you might have to go in and, and change some of these settings. Um, but that's the best I could do there. Uh, but yeah, this is really, really useful, right? It can, you can control, you know, basically, you know what you wanna control. If you wanna watch for low voltage protection, you wanna can make sure that you, you don't, don't dip below a certain voltage, you're all set. Uh, if you're using this in a solar setting, that would work really well because you can make sure that you don't overcharge with your solar charge controller and you can basically make sure that you don't underdraw with, with one of these in your contactor. So important thing is, um, your power supply, whatever your external power supply, that's gonna power your contactor. So this is a 24 volt contactor. I'll have an affiliate link below. Um, this is a 24 volt contactor. It should be able to take over 100 amps. And so I have 24 volts going in here. Those same 24 volts go out here and that's what controls this contactor, right? So if you get a 48 volt contactor, you're gonna wanna make sure to use um, 48 volts of power. So for example, if you're powering off the battery, the battery is gonna be powering its own contactor. Things can get probably a little complicated there. Um, I don't even know if it'll actually work, if the contactor would work off battery power. I'm guessing it wouldn't. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your, your, your external power matches the power that you're, you need to use to control your uh, contactor. The other thing is um, there's a quick setting right in there. Um, you have to change uh, from uh, this little plastic thing, you have to move it from J4 to J3 if you want to use external power. If you want to use internal power, you have to do that. But that's also on the website for the um, product. So you can see all the instructions there. But yeah, this thing, it, it works. It works surprisingly well. I'm really impressed with how easy it is to work, how easily you can control which things you want to apply or not. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, you could probably, you could have multiple settings go at once. So you could worry about, for example, uh, to pulling too many amps or the voltage getting too low, or all those sorts of things that you might wanna worry about your battery, um, you can use this. I wouldn't necessarily use it as a BMS, but if you, you know, it'd be a really easy tool to sort of control whatever power you're using. If, you, if you're using an off-grid application, you could just use off-battery power if you had a higher voltage on the battery, and just monitor, you know, what's coming in and out of your battery, for example. Um, this hall monitor, I think, is good up to at least 100 amps. Uh, yeah, it's good up to 100 amps, uh, and it's pretty sensitive, so. Yeah, I, I think that's really cool. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, otherwise, please uh, like or subscribe. I really appreciate any comments or questions in the, in the comments below. Thanks, guys.